Knows Best. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Brenna Knows Best. I'm your host, Brenna Berg. Hi, how are you guys? Happy New Week. You guys will be listening to this and it'll be the Monday after the 4th of July. I hope you guys had a great 4th of July weekend. I hope it was fun. I hope you were safe. I hope you enjoy all of the fireworks. Enjoyed. Okay, it hasn't happened yet because it's technically tomorrow, but obviously you know how this whole filming process works. We will be doing nothing. I, again, we talked about this before. I'm not a big fourth person. Carter is studying. That's that. But let's catch up on the week. Also, today's episode is going to be my IUD journey. Oh, actually, birth control journey, okay? I'm going to talk to you from the very beginning when high school Brenna first lost her virginity, okay, and how we evolve from there. So there's going to be a little bit of sex talk. So if you're around people or you have children or I don't know, somebody's listening that I might get a little uncomfy, not too much, but I think some detail to help navigate the story. And I actually think next week's episode I want to make on long-term relationships because number one, somebody asked me yesterday in live and then I thought, what a good idea because I've been in now three long-term relationships and I could kind of cover things from past relationships and my current and just talk about boundaries and communication and family things and all of that. So that'll be next week. So I'm super excited about that, which unfortunately, so I go to North Dakota on Wednesday when this comes out. If you listen on Monday, I'm leaving in two days for North Dakota. And so the episode that will come out the following Monday when I'm gone is going to be pre-recorded. I won't have updates for you because I'm going to have to do that within the next few days before I go, obviously. So we'll do a huge North Dakota recap in two weeks. Unfortunately, I wish I could do it in real time, but obviously that's just not feasible. But next week's episode will be long-term relationships. So if you're in a long-term relationship or that's your goal, I think it'll be great. I'll chit-chat to you about all of my relationships and kind of what happened and things that I learned. I'm going to start gathering information, but let's talk about the week before we jump into the whole birth control conversation. This week was a little bit more exciting. Number one, I posted this on my Instagram story that we had to go and get Carter a new laptop. What happened was Carter's current laptop, the space button had stopped working or it was being like super finicky. He set up an appointment on Saturday morning. So we wake up. I think I went on a run. He did a workout. We get back. He showers. He's like, oh, babe, by the way, I set up this appointment to get my computer fixed. And... Yeah, that's at like 1045 or something or 10. I don't remember. So he leaves. Obviously, I didn't go with. And he calls me shortly after the appointment got done. And he's like, babe, I got to I'm going to run to Best Buy. I need to get a new laptop. I'm like, what for real? He's like, well, number one, to get this fixed, it's like three hundred dollars, which his computer is like nothing special. It's just like this HP whatever that he got like four years ago. I don't know. I've always been a Mac girl. I know that's bougie. I know they're expensive. I know that's annoying. However, my mom got me a MacBook once when I was in college. Bless her sweet soul. And then when I came to Dallas, and you guys know I was an apartment locator, I used my personal cell phone when I was apartment locating. So to talk to all of my clients, it was on my personal cell, which regardless, that doesn't matter. But it was nice that the MacBook, you obviously can sync up your phone and text messages come on there. So when I was talking to people or texting, I could type on my laptop and be working at the same time. So honestly, I would have probably needed a MacBook anyways for that job. But oh, which reminds me of a story. I had my old MacBook still, right? Oh, that was two MacBooks ago. Wait, one time now, this is a different story. We'll get there. I was at my internship at, did I have to go get a new computer? I think I did. Damn. I dropped a lot of money at my internship at Exos. It was me and this guy, Chase, who was my program manager. And he was a little bit older than me. Not that much. He was great. Loved him. But there was an employee who was like a maintenance guy at the building that I worked at who would bring us Starbucks every morning. There was a Starbucks on campus, like on site. And he would just go over there and get us black coffees and bring them. Well, He brings in our coffee and then Chase needed help setting up these microphones or something. And you know how in a desk there's a hole so all of the cords can go through? Well, he was like, Brennan, can you reach down and get that? And while I was reaching down, okay, similar to the sweatshirt I had on, I had like a zipper on it and the zipper got stuck on the lid of this brand new scorching hot 
coffee and I lean over it caught the lid all over my laptop it was like smoking that was a mess so I think I actually had to get a new laptop then I can't imagine that it worked after that but now I'm not so sure I don't quite remember but the story I was going to tell you because it has to do with May dog this was before I owned May but when I worked at Smart City so I had a MacBook Smart City was the apartment realtor that I worked at apartment locator whatever we were at the office and our office was dog friendly and I used to watch May all of the time. Wait, maybe I owned her at this point. God damn. Now I don't remember. Oh, I did. This was at the very beginning because I lived at the house that we stayed at. Well, I used to bring her to the office, but a fun fact about May, which I don't think I've ever told you guys, is she is not dog friendly like she does not like other dogs here's what happens at first she's timid when we're walking let's say just on a random walk she sees a dog she'll run the opposite direction she's like scared at first and she's very what's that word submissive like if we're in the elevator she'll kind of crouch like she's about to go on her side at first but you put that dog around a dog or dogs for a long period of time, that first initial little timidness weighs off and she gets protective of me and she'll lunge at dogs. She doesn't want any dog to come even near me. I used to watch her and then my friend at the time, Jared, who I worked with, he has a golden doodle and I used to watch him jet. He was the most precious angel dog ever. I watched him all of the time. Well, one time I had them both at the same time at the house I lived in. And I remember the whole entire time I was watching the both of these dogs, May wouldn't let Jet come near me. I remember sitting on the couch, right? She would be on my lap and Jet would just like want to get on the couch with us. And if he was on my left, she's climbing across me to like lunge. If he comes around the other way, she's then bolting again. So... One day we were at the office and I brought her off in and then we would just go to like a private room or something because I hated being around all of the people anyways. But I was sitting on this couch in the main area and she was on the couch with me because if I left her on the ground, like I just didn't like her going around and doing whatever. So she was on the couch with me and sure shit, this dog is not even within 10 feet of us, like far away on my right side. And I had a coffee in my hand. This bitch lunges across my lap and my, my computer was on my lap. My MacBook is on my lap. May dog lunges across. This dog's not even close to us, but she's so productive. She hits my coffee all over my computer. I had to go buy a computer that day because I needed it for that job. I was talking to like 50 clients at a time, you know, like I'm constantly texting. Oh my gosh. I said, May dog. Yeah, I owned her because I remember we went home and I dropped her off and then I went to the Mac store and I remember carrying it up the stairs and I was just like, God damn it. Cause they're expensive. They're expensive. So that was that. Anywho, I don't remember how I got on this story, but Carter's computer. He has a normal one. He goes to get it fixed. He calls me. He's like, babe, it's like $300 to fix it. And also the requirements for the bar exam. So you take the bar exam on your own computer. It needs a certain RAM. It needs a certain hard drive. It needs all of these certain sort of criteria of the computer. And of course, like any sort of thing, they change the requirements like every two years. You know how that bullshit goes. So his was up to standard three years ago because he got it knowing he was going to law school and it was current at the time, but not anymore. And he's like, I'm not going to pay $300 to fix this one. And I can't even use this to take the bar exam. So he's like, let's go. Actually, he was like, I'm going to go to Best Buy. I'm like, can you come and pick me up? Like, I want to come with, don't leave me. And he was like, oh my gosh, of course. So he came home and picked me up. And then we ran to Best Buy and we kind of looked around and there was this amazing man who helped us which also he was like, hey, because we told him the reason we were getting it. He's like, I have this laptop, yada, yada. I just need this for the bar pretty much. And then once Carter starts working, he is supplied with a laptop from his work. But obviously that work computer is only a work computer because there's obviously confidential information being in law, legal. So that is strictly a work computer. But in my head, I'm like, besides doing work, like once he is actually working, what is he going to be using a laptop for? Like personal things like bills like I take care of all of that stuff typically and also I have a Mac which he can use like we share all of our things if he ever wants to use my laptop to like jump on order something or do something like he won't really need a personal computer you know what I mean because 
besides work, like it's not like he's in school doing other things anymore. Like he probably won't use a laptop that often for his own personal use. So we're like, God damn, we're going to buy a brand new laptop right now. And then it's probably not going to get used, which also he could just invest in one now. And then we'll just have that for forever and yada, yada. Well, this guy was so nice and so helpful. He probably shouldn't be recommending this, but he was like, we have a 14 day guarantee take back program or whatever return policy. So he's like, if you want to wait and just grab it 14 days prior to the exam and then return it after you can do that. Like as long as it's not beat up, like they take everything back, which is good to know in general. But Carter, of course, he's like, well, you have to register your computer before taking the bar exam. And the registration is July 12th. He takes the bar July 30th, which is like 18 days prior. Okay. Instead of 14. So he was like, that's not going to work because I need to register it. And then the guy told us after that, he was like, well, if you want to join the Best Buy Rewards program, it's $50 for the year. It guarantees you a 60 day return policy. So I was like, honestly, it's crazy that he was telling us this and recommending that we just like use it. But he was like a normal human being. Like that's the honest thing. If I were in his shoes, you know, that's how I would think as well. He was understanding where we were coming from and that it was like not ideal. And so Carter did buy the 50 year thing. So we picked out this laptop that the guy helped us find and it was like 600, 650, I don't know, a lot of fucking money. And then we added the $50. I still don't know if he is gonna return it because honestly, if his space bar doesn't work, like he doesn't wanna get that fixed, he might just keep it and that'll just be his personal. He's not sure, which is fine. We have time to think about it. But we went and did that. Then, okay, oh, the debate. The debate has run my whole entire life because Carter is such a fiend for all of this information. Like I think most men are into politics. I guess not all, but a lot in my understanding from where I'm coming from, people in my life like politics. I just, of course I care and I vote. And I try and know as much as possible, but it's not something that I deeply, deeply care about. That sounds ignorant, but like, of course I do care, but you guys will understand what I'm saying. It's just so honestly toxic and there's just so much and you never know like the honest truth about this, that or the other. I don't know. It's just like so annoying to me at times like the media how we make politics like if it was just about like this that and the other and people could have a normal head about it and just talk about things without getting heated I think it would be a totally different thing but I hate it because everybody's so crazy and like there are just no longer like moderate people you're either an extremist one way or the other, which I think to our core, a lot of us aren't, but that's how we've run this country for so long. You're either Republican or you're Democrat. Like nobody in the middle ever wins. And it's just like, you can't be one without like getting accused of being this, that, and the other. It's just like too much. And Carter goes in, he loves politics. Like I said, most men. So he's been watching shorts and then like recaps of the debate. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But I wanted to bring this up just to be like a good citizen and tell you to register to vote. If you haven't registered to vote, vote. And I think it's just important. I think everybody should vote if you can, obviously, if you're above the age of 18. And I think it's important. And I think you should try and gather information and know what's going on to an extent. Like I just said, I know it can be super daunting. And also like, I feel it depends on where you get your information from. I don't even know half the time if what I'm reading is real, which is also the unfortunate thing about just our media in general. But all of that to say, if you watched it, it was obviously like, I mentioned this in my run. They're both saying exactly what their supporters want to hear, which I understand is just like what campaigning is. Like they have to just lean into these things, but it's just like, okay, like there's nothing new. And everybody was like, of course Trump won, but like Biden is just like not even here. You know, like they had said that they drugged him up a lot. So he was like super coherent. Like I think one can, and I've seen TikToks on this. It is sad to see Joe Biden just like as a human being, like he's just an old man who's like losing it like all politics aside as like a grandfather you know like as just a normal human being removed from being the president of the United States like it's sad to watch like when he just like loses it but 
Do I think that man should be running our country? Gosh, now I'm gonna get, I don't wanna get into politics, okay? I'm just saying you should vote. And if you haven't registered, if you've moved recently, if you changed states, like make sure that you're registered to vote. Obviously Carter was in California before, so he had to register to vote here. So he's getting it sent and that is good. Speaking of Carter, his brother is in Jamaica. I told you this. We have Monday weekly calls with him. It's FaceTime, but it's on Facebook Messenger. And Carter's grandparents, I think both of them don't know how to operate Facebook Messenger. Well, they never even had Facebook Messenger to begin with. I logged Carter into mine on his phone. So I downloaded the Messenger app. I put in my Facebook information so we both can send messages. Oh my gosh, you guys. Speaking of... It was his brother's birthday like a week ago and I was like, don't forget to message him because we can message him on Messenger, but he can't get back to it until Monday. Like Monday is his designated time to like answer and call his family and all of that. Well, I messaged him in the morning and just said, happy birthday. We miss you. We love you. We hope you have the best day. We'll talk soon. And then later that day, I pulled it up and Carter had sent a message because again, he's from my Facebook, but his brother knows that like it's both of us. So it might be me. It might be him. But Carter sent the cutest message. He said, happy birthday. I'm proud of you for taking on this challenge head on and doing it with such a positive attitude. You're an inspiration to me and I can't wait to watch you transform over these next two years. Know that I think of you and love you. Stay safe. <sighs> that is so fresh. And you guys might be like, that's such a normal thing. But Carter is like very... To me, that is Carter. Like, he is so loving. He is so sweet. He is so kind. Not to say that he's not to other people, but he is just more serious and composed. And just from what I've seen, I think Carter has always been kind of hard on him because he is quite a few years older and he's just not the best at delivering things the nicest, which he doesn't need to be. That's just like how men are. But I just thought that was so sweet. I said, oh my gosh, I loved that message that you sent. But... A hurricane is hitting Jamaica soon. I think it's supposed to die down once it gets to Jamaica. But we were talking to him on Monday. And so, oh, what I was telling you is that we FaceTime on Messenger on my phone. And then Carter has been calling his grandparents on his phone. And then we put them together. And it's obviously just a jumbled mess because like the grandparents will speak and let's say he's still talking and obviously it's whatever. But honestly, they just like hearing him talk. So like we kind of converse with him and then they'll like chime in every once in a while. But that's been precious. And then we were asking him how they prepare for the hurricane that's about to hit them. And he's like, honestly, nobody's really that worried. He said, our house is made of cement and they tell us to just board up our windows. So he felt pretty cash about it, which I'm like, oh my gosh, that's scary. He's in Spanish town, which is honestly pretty close to the water, I believe. But yeah, that's been so nice to catch up with him. And honestly, we're gonna talk to him so much more than we did in the past when he was living in California. Cause obviously we didn't catch up week to week, but since he's like gone in Jamaica doing this mission, we're going to chat with him every single Monday. So I love that. I think his brother's the most precious little angel in the world. And I love him. Speaking of phone calls, I called my 90 year old grandmother yesterday because my mom yelled at me. My mom freaking yelled at me. She texted me again. She's like, call your grandma. I said, let me live my life. I call her. It goes straight to voicemail because she lives in the middle of fucking nowhere. Okay, she never has service. She's also 90. She barely knows how to operate the phone. And also, why can't she call me? Why are you hounding me? I've tried calling and also she can call me. Hello? That makes me so mad when people get into that argument about like, you never call. You never call me. Hello? Goes both ways. Anyways, obviously she's 90. She's precious. And we have a date set for the 15th when I'm home to go see her. Me and my cousin Lauren are going to go up. And she was really worried because she wanted to take us to dinner. But the one goddamn restaurant in her town of less than a thousand people is closed on Monday. She's like, oh no, what are we going to do? I'm like, we're going to figure it out. We can go to Dairy Queen. They have a Dairy Queen. I don't know if you guys are from the Midwest or know anything about my sort of living and growing up in North Dakota, but every single town has a Dairy Queen. Like this is literally a town of not even a thousand people. I don't know if you can conceptualize that, but it's small. Okay. They have a Dairy Queen. 
it's kind of crazy. North Dakota, the Midwest, I feel like Minnesota, Wisconsin. Actually, Nanny Dad is from Detroit, Michigan. And we went to a baseball tournament once and he was like, Brenna, did you know that down here in Texas, Dairy Queen doesn't serve chocolate soft serve? I said, wait, what? And he said, yes. He said, there are a lot of places where the Dairy Queen doesn't have the chocolate soft serve. Like, you know how there's vanilla? If you live in a place where there's not a twisty, you get a twisty cone. You get a, oh my God, the best. Okay. I think I'm calling it correctly. The twisty. I don't remember now because it's been so long, but a cone. And so there's the vanilla soft serve. There's the chocolate. And then, oh, a swirly. I don't fucking know. Anyways, there's the one in the middle that it'll twist and make a cone of chocolate and vanilla. Oh my God, that shit will literally make your whole life. You're having a bad day, go get a cone. Go get a cone at Dairy Queen. But he was like, no, there's some that don't have it. I'm like, why? Why would some not have it? Anyways, that was the craziest fact I had ever heard. I would drive home. I also love blizzards, obviously. And I liked dilly bars as a kid. I think because my dad liked those, he would just get three dilly bars. But once I was of age to drive 14 in North Dakota. I think my brother had left the house or maybe not in the summertime. If my dad knew I was coming home at a certain time, he would text me and say, can you grab me a dilly bar? Cause there was a dairy queen on the South side of town before I head out to Lincoln. So I would go by and there was a drive through and I would get a freaking dilly bar. My dad, can you get me dairy queen? I'm like, Jesus, go and get it yourself. Anywho. Okay. Grandmother. So my sweet grandma had 11 children. My mom is the youngest of 11. And I talked about this on my running vlog today, but she was like almost crying talking about how my uncle Dennis, who is the oldest. So my mom is the youngest. Dennis is the oldest. And then obviously there's nine in between them, but he turns 70 next year. And I want to talk more about this because this is her child. This is her baby. At one point, my uncle Dennis, who is 70, who is not young, was her baby like, can you imagine being 90 years old and all of your kids are like in their 50s and 60s and now 70s? That is like so beautiful, but also so crazy. Like if you're a girl like me in your 20s and your 30s, maybe you have a kid or maybe you don't, you've thought about it. Like you always think about kids in a sense of like young, I think that's how I think. Or like even in their 20s, but they're still like kids. Like you know, to older people, like they would consider me still like a child almost, you know, you get what I'm saying. 70 years old, your child. I just like, can't even for a second. I was like, yeah, grandma, he's 70. And then I was like, wait, that's like her first born. She had him in 55. Another fun fact, his birthday is 5555, May 5. 55, 1955, obviously, which is cool, which is the only reason he is the only birthday that I know. I'm not super close with all of them because obviously there's so many. And now one has passed maybe two, but I have 20 cousins and now there are more great grandchildren. So my cousins have had more children than there are cousins. You guys, my family's fucking huge, huge. And this sweet, sweet woman, she was like, yeah, I just got Ashley's birthday card out, which is my brother's wife. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, like she literally has to send out a birthday card every single week. And there's got to be birthdays every single week. When you think about all of those people, the kids, and then she brings up a story about how she used to give us money as kids and like for birthdays and things. And it was never that much because again, they grew up on a farm. All of it was not for like profit. I mean, obviously they would auction off cows and things. It was for personal consumption. So it's not like they were making a ton of money and they live in can do like whatever. I don't know, obviously their financial situation at all. They had 11 kids, but she used to give us cousins like, I don't know, anywhere from five to $20, I think. And then when we all turned 18, Okay, apparently this must have been a super big fight between her and my grandpa and my sweet grandpa. He passed in 2016. He was like 80 something at the time. So he lived a very full life as well. He fought in the war and he was amazing. But they got in a big fight because she said once they turn 18, she's done giving them money. And he was like, what? You're going to stop giving them money? Think about that. If she continued to give every single one of us money, that's 40 plus 
now grandchildren and great grandchildren should be out of money. I said, grandma, it's a good thing you stuck him to it because you would be broke. You would be so broke right now, but she just laughs about it, which is like so precious. Anyways, that was a great phone call. We were on the phone for like an hour. Oh, but what I was going to say is she'll go on and on about like some of my cousin's children that I've quite literally never met because again, there's so many, everybody's kind of in different places. I wasn't super close with that side of the family growing up because my mom just like hates going to her hometown, which I can imagine. I don't like going to my hometown. Think about having 10 siblings and just like being thrown back into that. I can only imagine, but my grandma's like going on and on about how these grandchildren don't, great grandchildren, I'm her grandchild, anywho, her great grandchildren like don't say please and thank you. I don't even know who the fuck she's talking about. I don't know these kids. I don't know what she's saying, but I sit there and I'm like, oh yeah. Like, do you ever have conversations with your grandparents that maybe aren't, she's definitely all there for the most part. She does repeat herself a little bit, but like, all in all, for being 90 years old, she's in like great shape. I mean, she's fallen quite a few times and she had breast cancer, but like as a whole, she does really well. But sometimes she starts going into these little tangents and about her siblings and things. And I'm like, grandma, I've never really known those people. And she just goes into so many tangents. Oh, and she talks about her town and can do is what it's called. And she'll talk about the Legion and the basketball team and the football team, because like that's her whole life. Like, like is following their little small high school sporting events and going into town and having coffee with their friends. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you sweet, sweet woman. I love you, but I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about right now. Okay, Amazon Prime Day sale. It's next week. So honestly, I should make a little reminder for next week's episode because it'll be literally on the day. I think it's the 15th and 16th. You don't need anything, okay? I'm over overconsumption. I know I talked about this on my Instagram story or buying things, but I don't wanna pressure anybody to buy things. However, if you've been wanting to make any big purchases, coffee machines, vacuums, pots and pans, Nespresso, AirPods, headphones, a hatch alarm clock, a Kindle, a ring doorbell. Like I think the bigger ticket items, if you've been thinking about them, a TV, like that is worth it because I think they are really on sale. But all the little knickknacky shit that's gonna be on sale for like not that much, not necessary. Or if there's stuff on your list that is little and you've been wanting or needing to get it, add that to your list. That's all I have about that. Maybe sheets, I don't know. But like like you don't need anything. I've been talking about it, but I don't think I'm going to buy anything. There's nothing that pressing to me. I've been loving my Kindle or my iPad as a Kindle, which reminds me of two things. We'll talk about the books, but first I'm going to bring LaDonna some books because she's been giving me books and she loves mystery thrillers. So I think so far, if you guys think I should give her any others, let me know, but I want to give her Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I think she'll love that. I think I'm going to give her Rock, Paper, Scissors by Al Sweeney. And then I want to give her a Frida book, but I'm not sure which one to give her. I wish I had the housemaid with me, but my best friend is borrowing that. I think I might give her Never Lie by Frida McFadden. I'm not sure yet. Oh, yeah, maybe. If you guys think there are any other ones that I've read thus far, maybe a Lucy Foley book, but I almost think she might not be able to follow with all the, the characters which I don't know why I'm giving her no credit, but I don't know. But I think that'll be so fun and I'm excited for her to read. Now I understand also like why she loves giving me books and we can talk about it because it is fun and like recommending a good book. I'm excited for her to read them and then we can talk about them. I'm so excited to see them. I don't need to talk about LaDonna and Gordy again. I am going to be with them Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, I get in Wednesday night at like 1030, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'm so excited to just hang out and sit on the patio. I looked up the weather. It's going to be like 80 degrees during the day, which means it's going to be like 50 in the mornings, which is going to be such a reprieve from Dallas. But let's get into the book update, you guys, before I talk your ear off more. It's already been 30 minutes. Iron Flame, I love you. Rebecca Yaros, I need the third book. I need the third book now. It's called Onyx Storm. I looked it up. It comes out January 21st of next year year. Okay. I loved Iron Flame. It was so long. I don't know how the pages on the Kindle translate to the real book because on my Kindle, it said 911 pages, but I can't imagine that the book is actually 911 pages. No, 
I don't know, but it was long, but there was so much that happened and it was so good. It was so good. And the ending, oh my gosh, which is why I need to know what happens. I need to know what happens. I posted about this on my story and some people gave me hypothesis, hypotheses, hypo their hypothesis is don't fucking ask me. Anywho, I'm not a person who like guesses what's going to happen. Like I have no sort of eye for like what I think is going to happen. I just like read as I go and learn as I go. I don't really do the whole guessing game, which is just me. Like it was funny because people were responding and saying what they think is going to happen. I was like, oh, I never even thought like I don't like filling in the blanks. Because then I feel like you might get disappointed. I don't know. It's just not something I do. Okay. And then you guys, I'm almost done with Too Late by Colleen Hoover. Loved it. Loved it. So many people hated this, which I could understand if you don't like dark things. Like obviously trigger warning. There is like sexual assault situation, stuff like that. Right. Which I understand that it's just a book and like that stuff does not bother me I thought this was so good and I it was such a quick read I forgot that Colleen Hoover books are almost similar to Frieda McFadden books in the way that they're like so quick and easy and I love that especially after having read Iron Flame like I just needed something so quick and this was available on Kindle which is also why I grabbed it so I'm gonna finish this today it says I'm at 90 percent so I'm almost done with it and then I'm going to find something else on Libby. I think that's available, but I do need to buy the Akatar set. I am in it. I loved Fourth Wing and Iron Flame, so I think I'll really like Akatar. So I want to get those because also I think the books are beautiful. I love the bright neon colors. I love that. So I want that in my collection. And also it's not available on Libby right now. And I just want to be able to have them, you know, but that's my book update. Product of the week, you guys, I literally wrote in my notes app, May Dog. I don't say or express my appreciation for May Dog enough at all. She is our little decor piece. Me and Carter call her decor. Like people ask about her and what triggered this is, I saw one of those goddamn videos of the veterinarians where they go around and they're like, okay, name the most overrated dog. And I will say most of them said golden doodle. Okay. But there were a few that said French bulldogs, unless you have a French bulldog, don't ever say that. Don't ever say that. They are the best dogs. I am not kidding you. Well, it depends on what you want in a dog. If you want like a smart dog who exercises and who can like be functional, not the dog for you. Okay. I can respect that. If you want almost damn near a cat, that sort of low effort animal, Frenchie. She sleeps all day. We go on small walks. She eats. She doesn't bite. She doesn't growl. She does nothing wrong ever. Like me and Carter talk about it all the time. She's perfect. Like she literally does nothing wrong. Oh, best dog. Don't talk to me about it. Product of the week. I love that little bitch. And I'm going to miss her so much being gone. Being gone from both of them obviously is so sad, but oh my gosh. Sorry, Carter. Being away from me, dog. She's just like such a little thing of joy like she can do no wrong she's just happy to see you oh i just love her so she's my product of the week okay you guys let's get into birth control i'm gonna try and wrap this up get to it i've kind of been yapping but let's take it back to the beginning when brenna started being interested in boys okay I lost my virginity when I was in high school. I was probably like 16. It was not a boyfriend. I don't know what I was doing. It doesn't matter. I was wooed by an older man, not older. He was a senior when I was, he was in my brother's grade. It doesn't matter, okay? It was like a one and done, maybe a couple and done, but like that was that. I obviously used protection. I was smart. I've never been a dumb bitch. Like I was not about to get pregnant. But let me remind you growing up, with my dad, I never had like birth control conversations. I never had period conversations. I never had sex conversations. So honestly, I don't even think in high school, I really knew what birth control was. Didn't even know. Okay. Because I'd never gone to a gynecologist. I just had never had those conversations. I did have a boyfriend in high school and I'm trying to think if we even really I don't quite remember. Maybe we did. If we did, we had condoms. Okay. Sorry. I told you we're going in. Okay. And then I go to college. I do not 
have a boyfriend. However, if you remember my situationship episode, I had been, oh, that was all through high school as well. God damn, Brenna. Well, it was protected. Okay. We were having protected sex. That was never going to be thing. I was not fucking with that. Okay. And I remember him, I think once I was in college asking about birth control, like why I'm not on it. And again, it was so foreign to me. So I was almost embarrassed because I didn't even like know what it was. I didn't know how to get it. I didn't even know, like, obviously I knew what it was for, but I thought to myself, like, I didn't need to be on it, which I think is a good mindset to have. I think it's often given to women too easily and too quickly for the wrong reasons. Okay. But let's talk about the eating disorder. So my eating disorder started my senior year of high school. Actually, I was about to leave for college. So I think it started that winter. I started to run, which we're in our healthy girl era. So don't you have to worry about me. However, I was going to the YMCA. I was running. I was eating nothing because I knew that people gained weight when they went to college, which like heaven forbid. But at the time I was like not in a place where I wanted to gain more weight. I was cognizant of how I looked. I was a little bit maybe chubbier at the time. In my opinion, again, sorry to talk about weight and sorry if I'm using insensitive words, but this is just like how I talk and think. Okay. And what I was thinking at the time And I was like, I cannot go to college and like gain more weight. And I think the guy I was with, that guy that I was like in a situation with for like three years, again, for some reason, we just think men want small girls or like people in general, like for some reason at a young age in our brains, it is set that like the skinnier, the better. And I don't know why that is. And you compare yourself to other people. So like, that's what was happening to me. And so that's where my thought process was. So I knew that when people went to college that they gained weight, obviously from drinking for the most part and like eating shit and whatever, but I needed to figure my shit out. So I kind of went the opposite direction. So I started exercising a lot and not eating. And then once I finally went to college, August of 2015, I was on the meal plan and I finally fully had control of my food. Cause back when I was in high school, like if my parents had food, I wasn't quite there yet where I was like not eating or telling them that I didn't want anything. Like I felt obligated because it would have been weird if I didn't. Like I was self-aware enough to know that other people would notice that I'm not eating. Cause I've always been a bitch who eats. Okay. I love to eat. I love food. I clear everybody's plates. Okay. And we're back to that place. But once I went to college, I had full control of my food and nobody could judge me or notice that I wasn't eating enough. So I was intermittent fasting and then I was eating like salads and oatmeal and that was it. And then at this point I started training for the half marathon. So I was running like 10, 20, 30 miles a week and it was so bad. But anyways, I lost my period. If you guys don't know, which again, at the time I had no idea, you can lose your period from over exercising, under eating. Like that is a big symptom because essentially what happens is your brain tells your vagina, okay, hey, this bitch could not sustain a child right now, which is obviously why we have a period and why this whole thing happens. Like just in terms of science, okay, follow along. So you stop having your period that way you cannot get pregnant or like it starts messing with that whole side of things, which at the time, like, again, I had no idea. I just lost my period and I was like, oh, and I think it took me a long time to really realize not that I was not eating enough and over exercising. Like I still don't think while I was in it, I really thought I had a problem, even though All I thought about every day was the little food that I was going to eat. Like I thought about food all of the time, even though I wasn't eating anything. It was like, oh, I go back to this place, a specific street on campus where I was walking to the wellness. And I just remember being like consumed by the thoughts of food. But anywho, I lost my period. And then I finally, I think I asked my mom I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I just don't feel like this is good. And nobody ever said to me I had an eating disorder. Like, nobody ever told me like, hey, are you not eating enough? Nobody in my family and my friends, which I don't blame them. Like, I don't, again, I was far away from my family. They didn't even see me at the time. And I was definitely, I'm 155 pounds right now. And that's where I've kind of sat my whole entire life. I've kind of been around 150, 155, 160-ish. I don't quite remember high school. 
The lowest I remember seeing on the scale was 128. I don't know if that was my lowest, but just to give you an idea, like right now I'm super healthy if you've seen my body, like I'm a normal bitch and I feel good. 30 pounds off of me is like pretty skinny. Okay, so it was noticeable, but again, it's hard to mention that to people. Like I understand if somebody wanted to say something to me, but they didn't know how, totally get that. But when I went to my mom, I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. And she was like, well, maybe you should go to Planned Parenthood and like get on birth control. Or I don't know if she said that or like talk to them about birth control. So I think in the spring of 2016 or maybe after the half marathon I probably didn't deal with it until after well I actually lost my period I think during the last bouts of that so it was after I ran the half marathon that I went to Planned Parenthood in Moorhead and I talked to them and they said yep let's get you on birth control that was just like one and done I said okay so honestly again the birth control was never about not getting pregnant it was everything to do with my period and my body and I go on the pill and I take it religiously how you're supposed to and slowly but surely eventually I get my period back however I came out of the eating disorder like that summer so immediately following my half marathon I started to eat more because I had moved to my apartment I started to understand and realize and actually I wasn't dating that guy anymore and I don't know if it was not his fault but like if I felt pressure from him in my own fucked up way to be smaller like I was single at the time so I, it might not have consumed me the way it did but anyway so I don't know what the real reason was but basically I got my period back okay and I was on the pill and I think it took a while like I think it took a few months and then okay I would have a regular period and this is how it went every single time okay and I also got a boyfriend friend at the end of 2016 this was like my first real long-term boyfriend we met at the end of 2016 so it was like during this time which I still was using condoms I was like I don't care that I'm on birth control again I didn't even think of it as birth control I thought of it as like in terms of my period so I was like I'm just not fucking with that I don't know if this literally is 99% effective and because what I'm about to tell you and how inconsistent my period was I was like uh, uh I don't even know what the fuck is going on with my body but basically I finally got my period back and then the first month it would be a regular period where I would bleed and then let's say 28 days later I would bleed again and then the next month, I would get my period, let's say, 25 days later. And then the next month, I would get my period, let's say, 21 days later. And then I would get my period at two weeks after my first one. I would get my period so frequently, twice a month, okay, I would go to Planned Parenthood. I'm like, hey, this is happening to me. They're like, okay, let's put you on a different pill with different like estrogen and progesterone levels or numbers or whatever. So I would get prescribed a new birth control. It would be good that first month and then it would get shorter and shorter and shorter. And I do the process again. I think I tried like three, four, five different birth control pills and the same thing would happen. So it would take months because obviously like a month goes by and then it would be like a little bit shorter and I'm like okay maybe that was just a mishap and then I get a little bit shorter and then I was like okay and then pretty soon I would get to a place where I was so used to having my period twice a month that I was like fuck it like I'm so done changing it and they weren't doing anything other than just switching my birth control which I don't know shame on them like obviously I also had fucked up my body from losing my period and under eating and the whole thing so like I don't know what the whole issue was but basically, I did that for so long. So I tried all of these different pills and then I started researching other methods. So my friend Chelsea at the time, she had gotten the thing in her arm. I forget what that's called, where they put that thing in your arm. She had one of those horrible experiences. It was like black and blue. She got really sick, nauseous. She had to get it taken out. And I was like, oh, that's no, freaky. And then I started doing like IUD videos on YouTube and people's experiences and learning more about that. And in my head, I had heard or learned online that you didn't get your period on it. You like it just sounded amazing. And because I had been getting my period twice a month, and that was that I was like okay I think I want to get an IUD so I came to Dallas I don't think I was taking birth control at the time I think I might have just said fuck it I don't really remember 
And then once I flew back, you guys know I got my first IUD, the Kylina, at that Planned Parenthood that I would go to. And it was amazing. The insertion was easy. I obviously cramped a little bit afterwards. It was a blessing. And the entire five years that I had that IUD, it was a dream. I didn't once think about it. I get light periods, but every month I don't track it because I don't even think about it. And again, oh, I'm about to tell you guys something so personal and so gross. And should I be sharing this? Okay. I obviously, I had that same boyfriend in college. Okay. When I was on the pill and like, that was that. And we never, obviously he was not doing that inside of me. Okay. I then got the IUD, right? And again, still in my head, I was like, I don't know how effective this is. I just think if a man does that inside of me, I'm going to get pregnant. Like, that's how I think. So I had a boyfriend here in Dallas for like a year and a half-ish, two years. Okay, never, never let him. I said, "Mm -mm -mm. nope, no, you're not doing that inside of me. Okay, I don't care if the, the IUD, they say like, that's not the reason I'm on it. I just am not giving myself a single chance to get pregnant. Okay. Then my sweet, sweet boyfriend Carter came along and I have a different philosophy. Okay. You got what I'm saying. So the first time ever that I have allowed that to happen. Okay. Which is crazy. And it's not because I want to get pregnant, but we talked about it and I was obviously, I felt very different about Carter from the first time. And I do now know that obviously this is the reason you have birth control. Kind of again. Oh gosh, I can't consult your doctor. Okay. Don't listen to me. And don't you dare come at me. If you get pregnant at any which way, don't. Okay. I'm just saying this is my experience, but that's why when my IUD was coming up, I was like, oh shit, I got to figure this out because for the first time in my life, this is something I actually have to think about. Cause before with the birth control or not, I wasn't letting anybody near that happening. You hear me? Okay. So that is why I had the Kylina for five years. It expired in May and I just got it replaced. As you guys know, let me talk about the process. I didn't talk about this last week. So I go in, I, you know, they do the blood pressure, they do the weight, they do all of that. They said, okay, come back, get naked, and then put this thing over you and we'll come on in. So I get naked. They're doing a sonogram with it, which at Planned Parenthood, my insertion, they didn't do that. It was just one nurse with me or one doctor that inserted the IUD. But my doctor comes in, another nurse, and then the sonogram tech person that monitors that or does that. So she gets ready. She puts a thing on my tummy to do the whole ultrasound so they can see where they're placing it. And the doctor was so amazing. And the process is so quick, like literally start to finish, not even five minutes. So Dr. Lopez, God bless you. I love you. And she's so cool. I wish we could be friends. I think I've said that before, but I don't care. I love her. And I've only spent like two minutes with her. She's like, okay, Brenna, like you're going to feel my hand. You're going to feel the speculum. Okay. It's going to be cold. It's metal. She's like, I'm going to open you up. Okay. I'm, you know, legs are spread. And she's like, okay, first we're going to remove the one you have. She's like, let me find the string. She's like, I'm looking, I'm looking. She's like, okay, here they are. She's like, okay, I'm going to remove it. Three, two, one. And also before she was saying that, she was like, like, this is going to be like a three out of 10 pain. So I was like, okay, she pulls it out. I'm like, Oh, it's just such a weird feeling, like similar to getting a shot. Obviously, like it's hard to describe that. It's not comfortable, but it's not that bad. Obviously, I don't think. OK, it's just like a super uncomfortable pain for a moment. So like that's what it is. And you start cramping in that first one because obviously they're in your uterus. So I start cramping, but I'm like, OK, good. She's like, okay, Brenna, now I'm going to grab your cervix. So they must grab the cervix to hold it in place to insert. And she's like, this is going to be like a seven out of 10. So she grabs it and I'm just like, oh, again, it's like just this deep, weird, uncomfortable feeling. But as I'm telling you this, this is how quickly it's going. And she's like, okay, I've got the cervix. Like now I'm going to insert the new one. And this is going to be like a 7.5 and eight out of 10 pain. That's what they say, whatever. She's like, okay, three, two, one. Again, she's counting me down. She's like in and I'm like, oh, and she's like, okay, pulled out the speculum, done, boom. And that was that, you guys. And now they said, wait a week since my last one was expired because there's a certain milligrams, milligrams, I don't know, milligram percentage or whatever in the IUD of estrogen or whatever the thing is that it uses, progesterone, again, 
talk to your doctor because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm just loosely trying to explain. But because my last one was expired, I think it needs a second to kick in. So she's like, okay, no unprotected sex for a week. I said, got it. Old Brenda would have been like, no problem. I do that anyways. Now I'm like, okay. I said, Carter, <gasps> do not. I actually have a friend who's off of birth control right now. And okay, I shouldn't be sharing her details. Anyways, she's getting a little reckless. But again, also, I'm at a place now where like I talk about getting pregnant as if like it would not be a good thing, which it's not ideal. But me and Carter are also in a place right now where if that happened, we'd be OK. But that's not here nor there. I'm not trying to. OK, but now I'm good. It's been a week since I got the insertion or the replacement. And it's amazing. And I highly recommend the IUD. The little tiny two minutes of discomfort for five years of not even having to think think about birth control or anything is something that I would pay a lot of money for. I love it to not have to take a pill every day. Like it is just a dream. I've heard many IUD wonder stories and that is my experience with the IUD. So I had that last Kylina for five years. I got the Kylina again. This is also for, this is also for five years. And obviously me and Carter will probably try for kids sooner than that. So all I have to do is go in and get it taken out. They just grab the strings, you know, they spread you open, take it out and then I'll be on my merry way. So honestly, I'm hoping obviously this will be the last time that I have birth control for whenever we decide this is, whenever we decide to have kids. Because after Carter is getting his shit taken care of, what's that called? A vasectomy? Totally. And then that'll be that. So yay, that's my IUD birth control. Only good things about the IUD for me. Let's answer a few questions and then I'm getting the frick out of here. Okay, I posted on Instagram a little bit late, so I don't have that many, which is honestly good for me. But what is your walking speed at for reading on the treadmill? I can't hold anything when I'm sweating. Oh, wait, speed slash incline when I read on the treadmill. I either am at 3.3 miles per hour at zero or three three to 3.3. And when I have a solid book, I just hold it, but I don't sweat because three to 3.3 for me is nothing. So just walk as slow as you need to not sweat. If you have a Kindle, I set my iPad now up on the, just whatever is in front of me. I just tilt it and then I just click through. But yeah, typically like when I have a physical book, I'm walking at like 3.3 and I'm just holding it, but I'm not sweating at that speed in our gym. It's pretty cool. So yeah. Okay, my girl, and I just messaged her. She said, is he the love of my life if he called me a dirty slut and ruined my birthday? I hate to break this to you. He is not the love of your life. If your man is calling you names, you need to either get that in check right now. Maybe you're young, maybe you're immature. Okay, if you love him, maybe say, hey, that doesn't fly. I would suggest you just get out name calling, never okay. And also, again, as a girl, like I just would never be able to look past that. Like. I would be stewing on that for so long. Like the fact that he ever called me that, like let's say Carter called me a dirty slut, like and actually meant it. Okay, I'm not talking in the bedroom. I'm just saying in real life, okay? No. Nope. Oh, our girl asked, which a lot of you know the answer to this question. She said, what season would you want your wedding? Slash, what is your reasoning behind it? I don't want a wedding. And honestly, you guys, you know what I was thinking recently? Because I assume that we'll be engaged at the end of this year or beginning of next, I honestly think we should go to the courthouse on April 15th and get married on our anniversary. That would be our two year this coming April. Because here's the thing, I don't, we're not gonna have a wedding. A lot of you know this, if you're new here, we're, me and my boyfriend will never have a wedding. That's just like not something we want. So the thing about getting engaged for us is like we can get married as quickly after as we want. And honestly, we've talked about getting it taken care of sooner rather than later. That way next year when we file taxes, which I guess it doesn't matter if we got married halfway through the year, is that annoying? We have to do two separate taxes, pre-marriage and post, or can you just all lump it into one? Cause we're like, let's just make this as convenient as possible because we know we want to get married. I know people might think this is like super not lovey and romance, but like, we are just not those people and 
we are and we want to spend time together like again I think what will happen we'll get engaged which I think is going to be super special because Carter wants it to be special and he's going to have you know his plan for that and then we'll get married at a courthouse and do like a small thing and then we'll go on a trip where we just get to live our best lives and enjoy each other and kind of do special moments in there like that's our loose plan I think but yeah that's that okay those are the only questions I'm gonna answer I've been blabbing for so long and actually Carter's coming home from his haircut so I'm trying to get this done I love you guys to the moon and back thank you so much for being here next week's episode is going to be on long-term relationships we'll chit chat more about like my previous relationships communication dealing with family issues which maybe I'll give you a little insight on some things that have happened currently recently and that'll be it but thank you guys so so much for being here I appreciate every one of you I appreciate every single one of you and I'll see you next week okay bye guys